Hey everybody, this is Christian and I know it's been a while since we covered the new app feature of TrueNest Scale here on this channel, but because I recently made a few changes on my storage server, some of you might remember the video where I needed to change the RAID Z levels of my ZFS storage boards and a couple of other different things here. I thought let's take the opportunity to make another video about TrueNest Scale and especially about running apps and how to expose them securely in your network by using a reverse proxy something like traffic. Because when you deploy some of your home lab applications on a TrueNest scale server, you really should be using traffic. Yeah, It's a great way to encrypt all the communication between your client and your applications that are running on your NAS. And you can also expose all of these apps with their own subdomain and trusted SSL certificates in your network. I've tested this with a couple of different deployments and apps using the amazing TrueCharts repos. And that is actually pretty straightforward. So I thought we will have a look how that exactly works and yeah let's install traffic on TrueNest scale. This video is supported by Teleport, a free and open source access proxy that helps you to securely authenticate to all your IT infrastructure like Linux servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications or remote desktop. You can easily protect your accounts with modern security features such as two-factor authentication or a passwordless login and access your services through the browser or the CLI tool with audit logging and session recording. And the best, it's completely free in the community version so you can just download and run it in your entire home lab. Or if you'd like to use it in your company, Teleport offers many professional features like auditing, single sign-on and more. It's a great tool, so just check it out. You will find a link to their website in the description of this video. Okay, so before I start installing anything on my storage server, let's first have a look at what we're actually trying to achieve here, because some of you might or might not be familiar with traffic. And if you're running apps on your TrueNest scale storage server, you probably know that most of them have any kind of web interface where you control certain settings or configs of the app, like Home Assistant, Plex, Next. Cloud. These typical apps that you might want to run on a NAS, they all have a kind of web interface that you need to expose somewhere to access it over the network. But this has, in my opinion, a pretty critical downside here because most apps, they usually don't use any encrypted communication via HTTPS. And even if they do, you will probably get a certificate warning here because these apps, they usually don't use any trusted certificates by default. So that is exactly why we need traffic. And instead of exposing the application itself on a different port, we want to use traffic as a reverse proxy to sit in between the application that is running on the TrueNet scale server and your client that's trying to access them. So what we need to do is we need to install and deploy traffic to listen on the TrueNet scale server on port 80 and 443. And then we will forward all the incoming traffic to the actual application. However, there's one problem that I ran into trying to do that here because TrueNet Scale is already using these standard ports for their own web interface. Yeah? And you can only have one application listening on the same port, not more. That's why probably most people just deploy their apps on different ports that uh, you always have to enter in your browser's address bar all the time. Or I've seen other tutorials, they just change the ports of the TrueNet Scale web UI itself. So these are then free again for traffic. However, I found an, in my opinion, more elegant way of achieving the same without the need of changing any ports at all. And that is by adding an alias IP address on your primary network card interface of TrueNet Scale. So adding an additional IP address that this server is able to listen on. And we will use this additional IP address to use for the app load balancer IP. You can do that in the network interface section of your TrueNest Gate storage server. There you will find a list of all your network cards and the associated IP addresses that are in use by them. In my example, I have three different interfaces and I'd like to add the alias IP address here on my 10 gigabit network card that I have connected to the 10.20 slash 16 network in my home lab. Uh, when you do this, always make sure that you're not using an IP address that is taken by another machine in your same network, otherwise you will run into IP address conflicts. So it's just really an additional IP address. It's nothing special. Uh, but once you have done that, uh, TrueNest is reachable on all these IP addresses in that list here. And uh, what we can do now is we just need to define which IP address is used for the web interface and which IP is used for the apps. Let me show you how I've done this. So first I have changed the 
node IP address of the app load balancer. So that's done in the apps menu under settings and then advanced settings. In the node IP field, you just set up your ADS IP address. This will tell TrueNAS to only use this specific IP address to expose any applications that are running on it. And of course, we also need to tell it to not use it for the UI anymore. That can also be changed pretty easily in the system settings general and just select the IP address where you want to listen it on. So in my case, I just added it on all IP addresses, excluded the alias IP address that I added to the 10 gigabit network card interface. So just save this and then it will need a quick restart of the UI and you need to log in again. But that's it. We now have one additional IP address that we can just use for the apps. And uh, there we can use the standard web ports like port 80 and 443 for our traffic load balancer. So before we dive into this section, I also want to mention another topic which is pretty important and that is getting trusted SSL certificates because uh, you should issue a trusted SSL certificate on TrueNAS scale first to get rid of this annoying certificate warning message in your browser. In my opinion, an important step that shouldn't be missed because otherwise you never know if there is a man in the middle attack happening or if you're connecting to a phishing website. So if you don't see a certificate warning, you can always be sure you're connecting to a legitimate website, even if it's just running in your local network. I think that is a pretty important step. And there are two possibilities of getting trusted SSL certificates working in TrueNAS. The first is just using a self-signed certificate. And I've recently made an entire tutorial video about how to create a certificate authority with just a few open SSL commands, trust it with all your devices in your home lab, and then create self-signed certificates for all the services that are running in your internal network. If you want to check that one out, I've put you a link to this video in the description down below. This might be a bit more complex to set up, however, I believe this is still a viable method to ensure a trust boundary between your devices and your home lab services like on TrueNAS. But for this demonstration, I would like to show you another method, which is much more comfortable in my opinion. And I'm going to use that from now on as my preferred way of getting SSL certificates in my home lab. And that is using a DNS provider like Cloudflare to issue an SSL certificate that is by default trusted on any device in the world. For this one, you just need to sign up on Cloudflare and register a public domain. For example, I own the domain clcreative.de, which I ordered directly from Cloudflare. And uh, then you can add a subdomain with a wildcard that resolves to the IP address of your TrueNAS scale server, more precisely to the node IP, which we have assigned as a primary IP used in apps. By the way, I'm already preparing a video that's explaining this part in much more detail that's hopefully coming out next week. And it's about running a real DNS server in your local network by using Docker, then you don't need to use Cloudflare's DNS server to resolve internal IP addresses on your network. You can just use your own DNS server. And I'm going to link you this video in the description as well once it is finished, but I probably will need one or two weeks to prepare it. And because we're just speaking about my videos, well, if you haven't already liked this one here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, then it's not the best time to do it because that's helping me to create more tutorials for you guys and create more tech content. So just hit that small like button if you don't mind. That would be really cool. But anyway, back to the topic, yeah? Because we need to go in the credentials certificate section. So here you can manage everything that has to do with certificates, yeah? You can see I already created one that I'm currently using from the web interface of TrueNAS scale itself. If you'd like to use self-signed certificates, you, you would just add them here in this menu and give this certificate a name and then select import and you then just provide the content of your certificate file. You need to do that in two text fields. The first is for the certificate file and the second is for the private key file and then you have a certificate that you can use later in traffic but again we don't want to do that right now instead we would like to use cloudflare and let's encrypt to get a trusted ssl certificate by using the admin dns authenticators and in here you can add a new entry select Cloudflare as your authenticator and then provide your email address and your API key or API token. If you're not sure on how to get this API key or token, Cloudflare also has some good documentation about that. But basically you can just go into the Cloudflare dashboard, then go into your profile 
and then on the left side go to API tokens. And here you can create a token or just use the global API key that's in my opinion a bit more comfortable. This you can use for all the domains that you're managing in your Cloudflare account. Just use whatever you are preferring, yeah, just use either a token or the API key. And because I've already done that uh, and created my DNS authenticators before, we can start creating a new certificate sign request here. And we just need to give this a name first, the name really does matter so much. And the type would be certificate sign request, of course. And if you'd like to, you can also customize all the other options for the certificate in here, like the cryptography settings, the key lengths, the hash algorithm. But the default values are also totally fine in my opinion, so I'm just proceeding here. And uh, then we have to fill in the information for the certificate subject, like the location, the organization values, and so on. It's actually not so relevant what you type in here. The only important thing that you need to take care of are the subject alternative names, because this is one of the factors where your browser later decides whether it trusts your certificate or not. So make sure you enter your public domain in here that you registered in Cloudflare. And you should also add a wildcard domain that's created by an asterisk dot and then the name of your public domain, which means this certificate will be trusted for any subdomains that you want to use for applications later. Uh, okay, great. So that is a thing about the sign-in request. Now that we have this one, we can use it to issue a new certificate by clicking on that small branch icon, accept the terms of service, of course, and then you can also customize your renewal certificate days. For example, I just picked 30 days in here. And for this certificate to become trusted, you need to change the ACMA server directory URL from staging to production. You could of course just get a staging certificate first and test the process and so on, but just keep in mind that this staging certificate will never be trusted on any browser, so you would always get a certificate warning message. Of course we don't want that, so that's why I changed it to production. And finally, we need to select the DNS authenticator that we have created before. This might take a few seconds until you get a response back once your certificate was issued correctly or not. If you have done everything right, you should now have a certificate in Trueness that you can use for anything on the box. So you could also even use this for your web UI certificate for Trueness that will get rid of the certificate warning when you log into the Trueness UI. But of course, we also want to use that in traffic later to expose any applications on our server. I know this was a lot that we needed to prepare, but trust me, when you're doing this all upfront, it's much easier to deploy traffic in the next step. And let's now do that, yeah? Let's deploy traffic. And I'm using the TrueCharts repositories for all of the applications that I'm running on TrueNets. If you don't know TrueCharts, it's a community-driven project to provide and maintain help charts, which integrate natively within the Kubernetes implementation of Trueness. I think this is an amazing project and they have some great charts for the most popular applications that you probably want to run on your NAS. Just scroll through that list here. It's absolutely amazing. I will leave you the link to their website in the description down below. And if you haven't already added their charts repo to Trueness scale, just go into the apps menu, select manage catalogs, and then add a new one that you call True Charts. Then you just need to paste in the URL of the True Charts repo that you find on the web page. Make sure that you select the preferred train stable and the main branch. And once you updated your catalog, which might take a few minutes, because just like I said, they have so many useful charts in here. And then you can see all of them in your TrueNet scale available apps menu and that you can now install and deploy seamlessly through this guided wizard. Absolutely cool. So let's now search for traffic in here and deploy this chart. And first, when we do this, I gave this one a name and selected the desired replicas. That should be always just one because we have a single server. And then we need to select the correct time zone from the drop down menu, which is sometimes a bit annoying to find, but yeah, I guess it is what it is. The important part that you should always enable here as well is the ingress class checkbox, which you can make also default if you want, because then you can simply use the ingress feature in other applications so that the application will be automatically picked up by the traffic load balancer. Don't worry, we will come to that in a second. And what I also wanted to do is I wanted to change the configuration of the entry points in here because we would like to make sure that traffic is listening with the web entry point, that is the HTTP service on port 80, and with the web secure entry point, that is the HTTPS service on port 443. 
All the other stuff here in this wizard, you can, of course, customize it according to your environment, but I guess for the most use cases, it's just okay to go with the defaults. True charts, they have some excellent default values in here for their charts. So I'm fine with all of these settings and just confirmed the deployment. And after a few seconds, you should see that your traffic application now comes online and you can already test if everything's working as expected, such as on my end in the browser, I've just checked whether I can reach the TrueNAS traffic service on the node IP address on port 80 and 4 for free. Don't worry when you get a certificate warning in here because we haven't told traffic here to use our certificate. That's why it will always fall back to the default one. But at least we get a connection here, so that means traffic is working. And I also tested if I can get a connection using some host names on the public domain that I've registered in Cloudflare. So the DNS resolving is also working and so on. No, if we have checked all of this, we are able to deploy our first application in TrueNAS scale by using traffic. And by the way, that should work with all the true charts deployments, at least the ones that I've tested so far. So I'm going to pick something new that I haven't really used before. For example, I've chosen a deployment of Home Assistant that I'm personally not using yet, but well, who knows? I recently bought a bunch of Philips U lights and some smart home devices. Maybe that's something I will cover in the far future at some point. So let's test if we can deploy Home Assistant on TrueNAS scale. We'll again just start with giving it a name. And now in the network section, we need to pay attention here because here you typically would just continue using the service type load balancer and set a port that is free. But because we now have traffic on TrueNAS scale, we need to switch to cluster IP, which means the Home Assistant application is not directly accessible over the network, but it is reachable within the internal Kubernetes network that traffic is also connected to. And then we just need to tell traffic, hey, please connect the Home Assistant and make it accessible on the network on this specific subdomain. And we can do this by enabling this checkbox here, the ingress feature, and set a host name for this application, followed by our public domain. A traffic will now look for any incoming connections that are coming to that fully qualified domain name and send these connections to the correct application, the Home Assistant. Also, don't forget to specify the path, which can be just the default root path. And because we want to expose the app with our certificate using HTTPS, we also need to enable the TLS setting and just enter the same FQDN in here as well. Just select the TrueNet scale certificate, which we have generated and that should be valid for this domain. And any other settings, again, we could also customize in here, but yeah, the defaults are fine here as well. So I just confirmed this and waited a few seconds until the Home Assistant service came up. And well, if we now enter the URL in the browser, you can see here is our Home Assistant app. We have our trusted SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt, which is always valid and it doesn't give us any warning anymore. We have encrypted the whole communication and we're using the standard ports 80 and 4 for free. So no port numbers we need to add to the URL anymore. And the TrueNet scale web UI is also still accessible on the main URL. So that is how you should be using traffic in all your TrueNest scale apps. You can now just go and deploy every other applications from the TrueCharts repo using the same pattern. It will work for most without any additional config needed. However, you can of course just still do other stuff, yeah, adding middlewares in traffic that handle authentication or change TLS settings and stuff. But I believe we have gone far enough in this video. Everything else might be a good topic for a future one. Maybe if you have some ideas, you can leave me a comment what you like to see and I hope you enjoyed it and you could learn something new if you do then yeah do me a favor and just give this one a thumbs up and share it with your friends and I think that's it for today yeah thanks everybody for watching and I will catch you in the next tutorial take care bye bye